Happy 2022, first video of this year. And if you're new to my channel, my name is Henry Gao and I share Procreate drawing tips for architects and interior designers. In this video, we'll look at 10 of my favorite gestures and two bonus tips that I constantly rely on to help me master Procreate with more ease. And knowing a few of these will really speed up your own workflow. So let's get into it. This first one you might already be familiar with, which is zooming in and out with your finger and you can rotate the canvas as you draw. I think this is incredibly useful and responsive actually on the iPad, which makes owning a small iPad possible for drawing. But sometimes when you're really zoomed in or when you're really zoomed out and you want to see everything kind of in one page again, and instead of manually trying to zoom this in to fit the screen, what you can do is just use two finger and pinch the drawing like this and this is going to quickly fit the artwork to screen gesture number two if you have a smaller ipad going full screen is going to be very useful i think that extra bit of menu bar on the top and on the side already eats up some of your kind of surface you're drawing so even on my 12.9 inch ipad i find getting a little bit more real estate for my drawing is always nice and I have this gesture set to tapping the screen with four finger like this. And this is just gonna get rid of the extra bit of menu bar and sidebar when I don't need it and tapping it back on just to review all these settings. Another common gesture that's default to Procreate is to double tap with two finger to undo like this and tapping with three finger to redo. What you can also do is when you're tapping on the screen with two finger without pulling it up, this is going to allow you to wrap it undo. You see how fast I did all those undo in one very quick uh, gesture. And the same thing with you can hold down with three finger to enable the rapid redo. But if you prefer a more manual approach, you can also find the undo and the redo button right below the sidebar in the preference actually there is actually a control for rapid undo delay and this is going to control how fast or how soon this rapid undo is going to kick in when you hold down your finger so the less the time the faster this rapid undo or redo feature is going to kick in but keep in mind whenever you leave a drawing session like you exit out of this paper space and then you come back into it in another time your previous memory of the undos and redo is going to be gone gesture number four is in my paper view you can slide down with three finger to invoke this copy and paste menu and this is very useful when you need to make a copy or a duplicate of a selected object like a bed or something that can be repeated multiple times or just to move a part of a drawing to another layer. I often use this if I have incorrectly drawn something on the wrong layer. And what I would do is just to make a selection of that, hit the copy and paste and in the layers palette, merge it with another layer that I want this thing to be on. So for example, if this text is incorrectly drawn on a wrong layer what i would do is to select the text and then invoke the copy and paste menu and do a cut and paste and this part of the text is actually moved to a new layer right over here and you can merge this layer with another layer or what you can do is just move this text or if it's an object you can move it around somewhere else in the page Gesture number five is a quick tip about merging layers. Let's say you have all these layers open and it's time for some cleanup. What you can do is you can merge some of them or all of them by just simply pinching with two fingers. So let's say if I wanted to merge this top layer to this bottom layer, what I would do is just to pinch them from top to bottom like this. And this is just gonna merge everything into a single layer. And this is really useful. Let's say you have almost too many layers created and it's eating up to the maximum number of layers you're allowed to create on the iPad. And this would depend on which version of the iPad you have. But for example, if you go to your canvas setting under the canvas information, under layers, you can see that you, in this iPad that I have, I am allowed to create a maximum of 55 layers for this particular canvas size at this resolution. And on a similar note, what you can do is you can also right swipe on the layers to select more than one. And then you can either delete them all at once 
or group them into a group. And if you've seen my other videos on tutorials and drawings, you'll see that I typically like to group all my line work into a folder and my color into a different folder. So this is just a, a simple way to keep things organized. Gesture number six is the layer visibility checkbox on the right. You can turn this off by turning the content of that layer off. What's cool about this is you can also tap and hold on this checkbox. And this is going to temporarily uh, isolate the content of that layer so you can see what's on that layer. And if you tap and hold on this again, this is gonna bring everything back on. And where is this useful in is when you have many layers drawn and sometimes you're looking for a line or a color and you don't quite remember where you put it on and this actually happens to me uh, quite often if I'm working really fast and instead of like turning layers one by one off what I would do is sometimes I'll just selectively go in here and see if that particular color or line work is on that layer. Gesture number seven is about clearing and erasing the content and drawing. So you can use the eraser and manually erase part of a drawing like this, or you can use your selection tool to erase part of the selected area. But if you want to quickly erase everything all together, what you can do is use three finger to swipe back and forth or scrub back and forth like this. And this is going to quickly clear everything on that layer as long as you have the correct layer selected. Gesture number eight is about coloring. So you can tap and hold anywhere on the artwork area. And this essentially is going to invoke the color sample tool. And you can see where the sample is taken by moving your finger. I find this much more useful than always going into my color swatch and finding the color or the preset swatch that I've used to color the area before. Gesture number nine is about this color icon on the right hand corner. Right now you can see I have a red uh, swatch selected but if I tap and hold and this is going to quickly allow me to switch to the previous color which is useful because oftentimes I am drawing with maybe a black pen and a red pen so quickly switch into red I just need to tap and hold and it's gonna switch me into a red pen and it all depends on uh, what color you have what two color you have selected for that swatch to be switching back and forth kind of on a similar note is let's say you are coloring with a marker brush, but you also want to erase with the same marker brush. And by default, this uh, eraser brush might be set to something else. Let's say if I have it set to the felt pen as default, and by quickly going into the marker brush, select it if I tap and hold, and this is going to erase with the same marker brush, which is just gonna very cool shortcut and also make this erasing a lot more kind of organic and natural as opposed to erasing with a different brush. And this applies to the smudge too as well. Gesture number 10 is, you know, there are times when you want to draw a perfectly straight line without, you know, setting up your 2D grid and enabling the drawing assist feature that I talk about in my other videos. So this is really easy to do and it's already by default in Procreate. What you want to do is when you're scribbling uh, a line, before lifting up your pencil. And uh, this is going to create a straight line for you. And you can actually just turn this into any direction that you want. And on a similar note, if you were creating a shape, let's say you're creating a round table. And so you need kind of a, a circular shape. What you can do is you kind of scribble a circle like this. I know it's not perfect, but you know, hold it and before picking it up, this is going to auto correct it into a much better circle. And even though this looks like a perfect circle, what you can do to make it even more perfect is you can tap with your other finger, just one on the screen, and you see how that's gonna make it into a perfect circle. And you can do this with other shapes too. So let's say you're drawing a, a triangle, but you wanna make it into an isosceles triangle. So right now you just hold down on your other hand, on your other finger, and this is gonna make it into a perfect triangle. Same thing with a square, or with, it's not exactly a square, but it's kind of close enough. Same thing with a square or a rectangle. You can use this approach to create something a little bit more straight and perfect. Now, I wanna give you two more tips, which are not exactly based on gestures, but I think you'll like it. 
Now, something about the second generation Apple Pencil, if you have it, is the double tap feature located right around here. I think this sounds really nice to have, but I've always invoked it by accident. So, and this is really annoying when you're drawing and suddenly you're erasing. So I actually chose to turn this off in my setting and under Apple Pencil and turn off this uh, double tap feature. If they somehow improved it with a software in the future, I might have it back on again. But right now it's turned off just because it's simpler for me to draw. Lastly, a tip for left-handed people. So if you're left-handed, um, I'm not. You can see this sidebar is typically located on the left side. If you want to bring it to the right side so you don't accidentally touch any of these buttons while you're drawing, what you can do is go into preference and enable the right hand interface. And that's just going to bring this menu bar over to this side. And if you want to customize any of the gesture control that I'm using or what I've demonstrated in this tutorial, you can do is go into the gesture control under the preference menu and I'll just run through what I have enabled just, you know, in case you want to do the same, but you don't have to. So under the assisted drawing, I have this uh, little square. Actually, I'll point it out where that is on the menu. So I have this little square set as a toggle to enable the assisted drawing feature. And this is probably one of my favorite things right now because this will allow me to quickly uh, change from drawing freehand into drawing uh, with straight lines or drawing in perspective in straight lines when I have the drawing assistive feature turned on. And in the clear layer menu, I have the scrub with three finger to clear the layer as I demonstrated before. In the copy and paste, I have the three finger swipe down option to invoke the copy and paste menu. And lastly, under general, I have the disable touch action enable. And I think this is almost a must because so you don't accidentally draw with your finger and you can only draw with Apple Pencil. Now, you don't have to use my recommended gesture. By knowing what you can do is important because saving a second here and there will really add up to make you work more efficiently. And when this becomes second nature to you, you won't even think about it. Now, do you have a gesture that I didn't mention here? If so, I'd love to hear about it so I can maybe include it in a video update. Seriously, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.